Hello. So I know most of you guys are in the nine to five world and you are at work. You don't have time to watch videos in the middle of the day. Well, I do. Today I wanna to talk to you guys about the current state of uh, foreclosures and forbearances and how it's affecting us in the creative finance world of things. Uh, and this only came up because I'm actually going through it right now. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Ashley Jackson. You can't tell right now, but I'm actually pretty fancy and doing okay. <laughs> Um, but I made a commitment to myself that I am not going to let the lack of hair and makeup and a glam squad uh, deter me from making videos to do what I love to do most, and that is teach real estate. I am currently in a situation where for the first time I have to close, foreclose on a borrower. So in my professional life, I purchase homes with creative finance, either with owner financing or I purchase it subject to the current loan. And then I resell it with owner financing, typically to borrowers who could not um, qualify for a traditional mortgage or loan. It's been going well. And I do that as a means to an end. Uh, my end game is, of course, buying my buy and holds in cash and using that cash flow as kind of passive income. Um, so anyway. Right now, I'm in a situation where some of my borrowers are not paying. And obviously, I believe it is probably due to COVID-19 affecting a lot of people's uh, income at this point. And we see on the news, you have the evil landlords who are kicking people out of their houses or the evil lenders who are foreclosing on people even during this unprecedented time. How dare they do it? And then in the real estate world, we're hearing a lot of people talking about the evil tenants who won't pay. I know they have the money, but they're just refusing to pay and they're using COVID-19 as a as an excuse. Or the lenders. I'm so sick of these borrowers. You know, I know they can pay and their income hasn't changed. Heck, some of them are making even more money during the pandemic because of all the unemployment checks that they're receiving and the loans and all that good stuff. And they're just choosing not to pay. I feel like I'm a great person to speak about this because I'm right dead smack in the middle. I am a borrower. I do have a mortgage on my personal residence and I'm also a lender where I lend out owner financing to uh, people who purchase homes. So I feel like I just, I'm a great person to speak about this. All of that to say, let's get right into it. You have to think about it. Me as a real estate investor, I purchased these homes subject to the current loan. What that means, and of course, I have a bunch of YouTube videos about it. You can join any group about it. But in sum, that means um, if someone already has a mortgage on their home and they can no longer afford it or they just don't want to have it anymore. A lot of times people have multiple homes and they just don't want to deal with the mortgage anymore. Um, I'll take over those mortgage payments. So technically and officially, I am not responsible for the payments, but morally, I am responsible for the payments. And I always make them, which is why I continue to make deals. I then sell those homes with owner financing on a wrap. So that means I'm gonna take that current mortgage that is in place with the seller that I bought the house from and took over the mortgage and I'm just gonna wrap around a new loan. And the new loan obviously is gonna to have to be bigger than the current loan so that it can actually wrap and cover it. So I use the payments from the owner finance borrowers to pay the underlying loan on behalf of the seller and then I keep what is in between as my cash flow or profit. So I think what a lot of people don't understand is I am still on the hook for that underlying loan. It just it doesn't just disappear. So in this instance where I am considering foreclosing on a borrower, it's not because I'm this greedy investor who just is like, oh, I'm just going to foreclose and do whatever I have to do. No, it's because I'm responsible for taking care of that seller who trusted me with their credit trusted me with their mortgage, you know, trusted me to take care of a problem. And so if that owner finance borrower is not paying, then I am unable to do what I morally signed up to do. And that is to take care of this other family who is depending on me to take care of these mortgage payments. Um, of course we have reserves, right? So typically I keep about three months reserves uh, for each property that I sell with owner financing, just in case something does happen. You know, maybe the borrower is late or maybe the borrower couldn't pay for that month. That gives me three months in reserves to problem solve it. And that could be getting that borrower out, I mean, getting someone else in or whatever it may be, but we have reserves. Well, COVID-19 has made those three months reserves nothing, right? I mean, we've been in the coronavirus shutdown, what, since, uh, February, so like seven months, you know, no investor in their right mind can afford to keep seven months of reserves on owner finance properties. Cause you have to remember, these are pretty houses. These aren't your little, I'm going to buy it for cash distressed homes. These are beautiful, uh, oftentimes luxury homes. And so to keep that much, uh, in reserve will be like hundred thousand dollars. I mean, no one's going to do that. That makes no sense. Um, anyway, 
So, of course, we do have reserves to cover things like this. Um, but now that things have changed, you have to think a little bit faster. I'm, I'm getting on a tangent. Let me just get straight to it. So what I want to show in this video is how many people are affected by, and this is just from the lender's perspective. I haven't gotten to the borrower's uh, perspective yet. But from the lender's perspective, me, there is a lot of people who are going to be affected by an owner finance borrower not paying their mortgage. Number one, my family is going to be affected, right? I depend on that cash flow to take care of my own personal mortgages or bills or things like that. The second family that's going to be affected is the borrower's family, obviously. Um, you know, they are going to have to start looking for another place to stay. They may not even have the income to qualify for another place to stay right now during these times. And then, of course, the third family that is going to suffer is the family whose mortgage I took over, you know, because now their credit score is going to go down for late payments. Um, they might now be on the hook for making those payments. And they obviously don't have the money to pay two mortgages, which is why I stepped in and they trusted me in the first place. So it's almost like picking the lesser of two evils. Do I continue to allow this borrower to not pay but still stay in the property and now three families are going to be affected? Or do I pick the lesser of that evil and say, well, I have to foreclose on you because now only one family will be affected. And it's not to say your family is less important, but when I'm looking at it, one family not having a place to stay versus three families not having a place to stay, uh, for me as a leader, that is a, a decision that is difficult to make, but one that has to be made. I'm going to have to let that one family figure it out so that three families aren't affected and trying to figure it out, especially when um, the responsibility laid on that family who did not make their payment. So for me, that's for, from the lender standpoint. From the borrower standpoint, I get it. I 100% get it. No one could have predicted COVID-19. Uh, you know, even to qualify for the owner finance mortgage, they obviously were making a, a substantial amount of income in order to even qualify for it. You know, so of course they were doing well and they could not foresee this. Um, and so I 100% understand that. And when you have to make decisions, well, do I feed my children today or do I try to make this mortgage payment? I mean, you're going to feed your kids. You're going to do what you have to do. I, I'm a mom. I mean, I 100% understand that. And so I think we meet in the middle with some options. Now, some of the options that I gave to my borrowers who are uh, in non-payment right now, um, the first option is always, hey, just give me the house back. Give me the house back. We call it even. You walk away. Whatever is owed, we, it's, it's done. It's wiped out. You just need to move out in the next two weeks. Um, and we'll let bygones be bygones. The problem that I'm seeing now, and that could just be with the borrowers that I'm dealing with, is denial. Um, they really are hoping, no, things are going to get better. I can't lose my house. I, I, I can't give this house back to you. Um, I, I, I'll figure something out. But I think once we're into seven months of COVID-19, I think at some point we have to have a conversation with ourselves to say, you know what, this might not be changing anytime soon. Um, and, and maybe I do need to try to figure something else out. Uh, the second option that I gave was um, cash for keys. You know what, if you can't afford to move right now, even though you owe me, I will still pay you to help you with your moving cost uh, so that you can go ahead and give me the house back and then you can move on. Now, I still have some reserves. Well, I had reserves. <laughs> they got, I got a little far behind. But with those reserves, uh, I would still cover the underlying loan. And then uh, from my own pockets, um, I will be paying to help them move out uh, so that I can get the house back and get another buyer in there or borrower in there so that we can start that house cash flowing again so that I can catch up the underlying loan because that's my moral obligation. Is it my financial obligation, legal obligation? No, but morally, I told these people I'm going to pay their mortgage and that's what I'm going to do. Um, but then that puts me in a position, right? Because I'm still a mom and a wife. Well, then how am I going to continue to pay two mortgages? You see what I'm saying? Okay, another option is I could sell the note. So I could sell the note to another investor and that investor will now become responsible for the promissory note. Some issues that I have with that is number one, I signed on for this responsibility. So what if that other investor stops paying on the underlying loan that I told these sellers were gonna be paid every single month on their behalf? Um, for me, even if I'm passing on the responsibility legally and financially, morally, that just doesn't sit well with me. Um, and then if I sell the note too, well, my borrower is going to be a wor in a worse situation because I can't guarantee that investor is going to have the same heart that I have. I will, don't mind you giving me cash, me keys for cash. I don't mind you just moving out and letting bygones be bygones. But when you're dealing with the bigger company um, who buy and sell notes all the time, I'm not sure you're going to get the same leniency. 
Um, and again, even though that's my borrower who is not paying, I still feel a responsibility to them as well because they didn't just buy the house, they bought a piece of me. They, they wanted to work with me because of who I am and what I offer. So it just puts me in a, a really odd place. And then of course, the final thing is foreclose. At the end of the day, if none of the other, oh, I'm so sorry. There's one more. This is actually the, uh, I'm sorry, I wanted to get to this. This is actually what I decided to do. Uh, so what I did with one borrower is I allowed them to do a hardship discount. Um, so I discounted their monthly payment for the next three months so that their payment can just cover the underlying loan. That way I'm still taking care of the other family um, whose name is on the mortgage, but you know I'm responsible for paying it. Now, what does that do for my family? Well, now my family is gonna lose that cash flow. So that money that we were getting in between every month that we were using to pay for our own personal bills and expenses and mortgages, that money's not gonna be there. And so now my husband, even right now, he's not home. He has to go out and work even harder to cover all of those costs because that one homeowner borrower is not paying. And so I think a lot of times people don't see the trickle down effect. It's not just magic. It doesn't just magically take care of itself. You know, now my husband is away from his family um, because we have to pay what you're not gonna pay because we're gonna offer you a discount to try to give you another chance. Uh, so I did go ahead and do a discount for three months. I did let it be known. If you have any late payments during this time, anything, if everything does not go well, I'm gonna to have to foreclose on you because I'm not gonna have my husband working his butt off every single day, all day to help pay your mortgage that you said you were gonna pay. And I'm definitely not gonna put my sellers, the person who trusted me in a bad situation where now they're gonna be foreclosed on and their credit is gonna be um, impaired because again, you don't wanna face reality that COVID is not going anywhere anytime soon. Your income is probably not gonna go back to where it was and you, your ego is not allowing you to give this house back when you still have an opportunity to do so. You know, So I'm gonna give you this opportunity, but I'm not gonna put everybody who's depending on me in this transaction at risk because you're having some issues with your ego. And, and, and that's my opinion. So again, the final thing will be to foreclose. Um, again, after I've given chances, I've given you an opportunity to pay. I have to do what I have to do. I have too many people depending on me um, and the foreclosure is just going to have to happen at that point. So I really hope I was able to shed some light on just both sides of it. You know, being a borrower, I know it's very difficult, um, but being a lender, it's also difficult times for us as well. I hope this was helpful. I, I do feel like I might've been a little bit biased only because my heart is tender about this um, these borrowers who are not paying right now, um, but it's very difficult for me to be upset with them because again, these circumstances were not in their control. It's not like they could have predicted um, that it would go on this long and I get it. So I think, I guess the summary is get over yourself. And I, may, I might need to tell myself that too, you know? Get over yourself. If your financial situation has changed and you can no longer afford the lifestyle that you could um, pre-COVID, get out while you can before things take a legal uh, turn. Just go ahead and, cu and cut your losses because I believe in abundance. You'll get it back. You'll get it back. You got it once before, you'll get it again. And guess what? I'm not going anywhere. I'll be a real estate investor for a very long time. So once you get your finances back in order, I'm happy to uh, sell another home to you with owner financing, but only if you're gonna do right this time. Um, if it goes through a foreclosure, then obviously I'm not going to uh, sell you another home. And then I have other houses right now in my inventory that are much less expensive. So, hey, we can swap a house. You give me that house back, I'll be happy to put you into another house that is more affordable for you. Okay, it's turning into a rant. It wasn't supposed to. I hope this video was helpful. As, as a matter of fact, I know it was. I really um, believe that this video will help someone who's watching it. Other than that, please check us out, www.jacksoninnovates.com. Join our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash the REI teachers. And we have our happy hour every Thursday where we talk about fun real estate stuff like this. And you guys know we have uh, homeschool going on. So those little cute toes are Liam's. All right. Later, Gators. Mommy. Yes. I learned all day.